come, hear me little Jackie, no one smoke me bucky, have a bit of cracky, till the boat comes in, dance to the daddy, sing to the mommy, dance to the daddy, to the mommy, sing, so she'll have a fishy, on a little dishy, so she'll yeah, have a fishy, land. when the boat comes uh, in. I want to call up, uh, I love it when you talk dirty to us, Len. Pick up a 2 on 4 deal, haven't you? Well, Thomas, by the time you receive this letter, I'll have been in the new marina for, what, nearly a month now? Oh, by the way, the postman does call here most days, so write to me, you rat. Time, as they say, just seemed to fly by. Lively and Pippa, my next-door neighbours, have been really great. You'd like them. Thomas. Dream boat. Hmm? The lights are on, but there's nobody at home. Sorry, pet, but your favourite punt I once taken at the town. Oh, dear. Why is it always me, eh? Just look at the draw, pet. Listen, if I were to talk really dirty to you, would you give the job to someone else? Even you couldn't talk that dirty, Thomas. Hmm. Well, it's the right dustbin bag at times, isn't it? There you go, me old cocker. Feeling lucky tonight. Aye, man. I'll be using a new system. Worked it out last night. Listen. Turn round and wait. I'm five minutes. Five minutes? Some system, innit? I'll not be stopping long. All oh, my love, Sally. All oh, my love, eh, Sal? That's right, old son. Stuff it all in nice and tight, like. Darling, Sally. <laughs> Dear Sal. How fast can a cockney drive? Well, there's fast, there's very fast. But I think what you want is messy pants fast. That's me. That, that, that calls for me. Well, that's her. Tell her you've been held up. Hang another left at the next junction. I take it they weren't too keen on your new system, then. Why, dearest darling Sally, you big softy man. Oh, yeah. Cheeky bastards, eh? Yeah. I think they got the right arm as it happens. What now? Left here! Pull over. All right, all 
right, all right. What now? Well, I don't know what your plans are, old son, but I'm off to find some sunshine. Hold up. That's not loaded, anyway. Not loaded? Well, of course not. I don't do this sort of thing every day, you know. It's just that them bastards have been cheating us and hundreds like us for years here. Look, fair plus a tip. No, 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 I can't take that. Why not, man? Because I don't need the aggro, that's why not. Especially old Bill-type well, aggro. don't be a prat, man. Better not call the law. With the edge up, they won't. <laughs> See, is unlicensed. Go on, take it. Get yourself back down south again. Go and buy dearest darling Sally a new frock here. And here. Thanks very much for the ride. It was great. Dearest darling Sally a nice new frock. Poor old Thomas a new pair of trousers. Formidably, formidable, but do you know what she is? She's one of them Trojan warriors, born a couple of centuries after a time. It's called fantasizing, lively. Happens to men of your age. What? Big buxom woman, short Trojan skirt, leather lace calves, big shiny breastplate. Oh, God forbid. Ready then, lively. Ready? Refresh pint, you daft old sod. I hope this is good news, Edward. It is getting near Christmas and your stocking is due to be filled. Oh, well, I, uh, I have, as they say, some good news and some bad news, Alex. Bad news? It, well, the good news is that I've managed to push through planning on all three phases of the Marina project. Manage? You are the chief planning officer. With what I've paid you... Alex, please. Not so loud. The bad news? There is nothing we can do to prevent this Mrs. Hardcastle from developing her sight. I want value for money, Edward. Alex, there is nothing I can do. The site is a registered marina. That woman can build and develop her site, and as long as she can prove it's business-related, there is nothing we can do to stop her. I'm sorry, Alex. We have a problem, I can tell. Just a minor hitch. Nothing Jock can't sort out. Look, Alex, why don't you let me handle this? I haven't time to ponce about, Simon. It's Alex Peach, Jock. Uh, that little problem I told you about earlier. Yes, that's the one. If you wouldn't mind, Jock. Fine. Oh, and Jock, uh, just frighten us. Oh, 
Oh, no, don't. D please don't. Please don't. Some flipping getaway driver. Someone's idea of a joke. It's a pretty sick sort of joke, Pippa. Well, over the rat. Hello. Well, now, it's started then. And it'll get worse if you stay. Much, much worse. Now, you listen to me, Snothead. Oh, no. Nasty names gets you a sack of live rollings. You'll be crawling with them. If you think for one moment that I'm scared of a few rats, then think again. I don't frighten that easy. Oh, bummels! I take it that wasn't a telephone pitch for double glazing. Bloody cowards. That'll do nicely. Hello. Hello. Sal? Tell me when to start screaming. I'm really good at screaming. Apparently it's all a matter of breath control. Just breathe in and out like... <gasps> Pippa! Would you like your eggs? Oh, at least I didn't smash it up. Who's they? Sal? I don't know, Pippa. Right. Well, I'm going to get rid of our furry friend and then I'm going to bed. Bed? How can you think you're going to bed after all this? I refuse to be frightened by a dead rat and a sick phone call. Yeah, you're right. Sodom. Tell you what, I'll stay at night sort of guard duty. <laughs> oh, poor little bugger. Poor little bugger? for boulders, Mrs. H. Hello, my lady. You look knockout.
Welcome home, Thomas. Oh, God. Does it hurt? Of course it bleeding hurts. All right, all right. No need to snap my head off. It was you, wasn't it? It was you who hit me. Sorry about that. You will be, cocker. Now, sit oh. down, shut up, and oh. leave her alone. Her? Satisfied, are you? Or do you need more proof, eh? No, thanks. Anyhow. It was your own fault coming in here and perving. She has got a point, you know. I was not perving. No, I didn't mean that. Mm. Well, you can't really blame her. I mean, look at it from her side. What are you talking about? She bashes me over the napper and I'm supposed to look at it from her side? Yeah, but after what happened last night, she was just being protective, that's mm. all. And some. <sighs> I've got double vision. Mm. Oh, I'm blinding that ache. Oh. Poor Thomas. Mm. Poor, poor Thomas, always in the walls. Froze me cods off in the car last no. night. Didn't know if I missed you, Sal. And I missed you too. But every time I see you, I cop some pain. What happened last night? Sorry? Well, you just said uh, after what happened last night. What happened? Oh, just a bit of a problem, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Well, nothing much to worry about, anyway. I'm telling you, Peter, this woman hasn't a snowball's chance in hell of putting anything together that should cause us concern. Don't worry, I'll deal with it. It won't be a problem. Fine. Uh, speak to you later. That woman and her tin pot operation. It's just the usual investor's nerves, Alex. You know what babies they are. This reporter and her bloody articles aren't helping matters. You know her. Can't you get her off my back? Uh... Slightly sticky situation there, old chap. Ah, uh, who? Jock. Now, don't let's be too hasty here, Alex. I want that Hardcastle woman put out of business. Leave it to me. Let me get inside and suss out the situation first. How's everything been with you then, eh? Been doing anything exciting? No, no, not really, no. Drove the getaway car in an armed robbery, but nothing out of the usual, <laughs> you know. Oh, well, it's your sense of humour. Yeah? Yeah. Is that all you miss, Sal? I'm really pleased to see you again, Thomas. Listen, Sally, the re... Oops. <laughs> Oh, oh, bloody Thomas, hell. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Mate, you're always hurting me, I you. I couldn't help it. It was an accident. Yeah, that's what you always say. You're a walking disaster, you. Flipping Jonah. Excuse me. I'm what did you say? You heard. I think you'd better take that back. Well, with the edge up, I... What happened the first time we ever met, eh? Get me involved in a punch-up, didn't you? Then, then, you ran over me foot. Oh, I wondered just how long it would take before you brought that one up. Yeah, and do you remember me being fish-whacked, eh? And then falling off that bleeding horse? That had absolutely nothing to do with me. No, of course not. It's never down to you, is it? But I can't help it if you're accident-prone. Accident-prone? Me? I love that. I don't believe you, woman. Listen, you! Nobody asked you to come back, you know. Flipping Jonah! Oh, bubbles! It 
If you, uh, if you feel up to it, I'll show you around the place. Be all right, if you like. Well, please yourself. Do you want to have a look around or not? All right, don't get the arm. Now, what is Mr. Cavendish doing with Councillor Fielding's wife, as if we didn't know? The job now is to get this one finished and ready for the start of the season. Is this mechanic? Uh, no, no. This is an old friend of mine, Thomas Allen. What's that? How do you do? <laughs> we'll be an idiot mechanic pretty soon, my nose. All right, don't worry, Alan. I'll get it sorted. I'll show you the rest. No, but I'm a mechanic, aren't I? Yeah, I'm well aware of that fact. Thank you very much, Thomas. Well, come on. I mean, you need a mechanic. I am a mechanic. I mean, problem solved, isn't it? Oh, come on. Come on. Give us a job, please. Please. Will you? Come on, give us a job, eh? Give us a job. Bugger, Thomas. Gin. And you are lovely, Mrs H. I'll show you the rest. That's yeah, a right little one from home, isn't it? All it needs is a lick of paint. Yeah. What's the matter, Sal? Nothing's the matter. Are you sure? Why did you come back, Thomas? Because. I left a pair of my best socks here. I thought it was best to pick them up, you know. Tell me why. Well, basically, uh... Because... to do, Thomas. So have I. I missed you too, sweetheart. Why didn't you write, you rat? Shut up. Mm. <laughs> Come here. Oh, no, no. Oh, what's wrong now? The hatchway isn't closed. Pippa might barge in. The last thing she ever does. Don't go away. Oh, um, Mrs. Hardcastle, please. Uh, none today, thanks very much. No, no you, you don't understand. It's most important that I speak with her. Yeah, well, shame in. Sorry, pal. Thomas, who is it? Uh, Mrs. Hardcastle, sorry to disturb you. Uh, I'm here on an urgent business matter. Oh, sorry, none today, thanks very much. See, I told you. Um, my name is Thorne. I used to work for Alex Peach. Peach? I'm here to help you. 
Oh, uh, sorry, Thomas, could you give us five minutes? Thank you. Still had a bit of a headache anyway. I'm not really sure what you're offering, Mr. Thorne. Simon. What you're offering, or for that matter, why? What I'm offering, Mrs. Hardcastle, is the benefit of my professional services. Yeah, well, I already have an accountant, thanks very much. May I be so bold and inquire who represents you? I don't really think I, that that's I, any I, of your... I really shouldn't have asked such a personal question. Please forgive me. And believe me that my only wish is to help you defend yourself against Peach and his, uh, band of thieves. But as I keep telling everyone, I'm no threat to Alex Peach. I don't give two hoots about his marina project. Hiya. What have you been doing on Werner? What's it got to do with you? Just ask you. How's your boss? Tommy, it weren't my fault, were it? Whose fault was it then? Oh, and by the way, my name is Thomas, all right? It's not Tom, it's not Tommy, it's Thomas. Right, all right, can you teeth then? You always a stroppy. You always a slippy? Yeah, no size. You don't believe that at all. Then why's a pint then? You've got some chance, haven't you? You've seen this lump on my head, look at that, look, look. Oh, come on. Married on to play football, calls up and play pong. Hey, you want to tell Lively what I've done to you? He laughed his socks off. Good old Lively. Oh, Bertie, this is uh, him, your man. Uh, Thomas. Uh, uh, Sally's. Uh... Oh, right. Sally's told me a lot about you. Pleased to meet you. And you, sweetheart. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think he's a big, strong girl, isn't she? <laughs> right then, how much? Do what? Oh, we have to have a little bet on game, don't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, if you want. Well, uh, what shall we say, a quid? Oh. Two? Three? What? A blue? <laughs> yeah, all right, here you go. Thanks, you do, just start. <laughs> uh, Thomas, house rule. Cash down front. Saves that for later. If you want. I think you'll find the expression is cash up front, though. In here, Thomas, the term is cash down front. Nice and safe down there. Safe as houses, I'd say. The potential here is enormous, Sally. With the right amount of investment, you're sitting on a gold mine. Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not really that interested in making fortunes. I just want a small business that I can live with. I want, well, I want the quiet life. I can still be of help. Look, I tell you what, I'll go back to my office right now and put down a few facts and figures in the form of a financial portfolio. And you can tell me what you think over dinner. Dinner? What? Tonight, you mean? You'll make a boring old accountant a very happy man. Oh, look, um, I'm very grateful, Simon, but uh, I really don't think I can make tonight. Oh. That, uh, that's a great shame. Well, um, what about tomorrow or maybe the day after? Unfortunately, I'm tied up with other business until early next week. Look, I know it's short notice, but it would save you a lot of work and worry. It could even save your business. Spoony shop. So this peach is a bad egg, then, eh? Mm, with a capital B. A hooligan and a collar and tie. God, you've got the luck of the three blind mice, you have. You reckon he's responsible for the dead rats and the frighteners last night? Well, full oh, man, too, I say now. Do I look worried? What about the old Bill? Old Bill, old Bill who? The law, you daft mick. Peach is far too shrewd for the Lord Thomas. He never gets his own hands dirty. He has thugs to do all that for him. Yeah, sounds about right, then. Thomas? Oh. Tell you what, though. She's a Jonah, you know. A Jonah. Jonah? Jonah, hurry, you, though. You sure? So, I got lucky. She's running on a shoestring. She's agreed to be my guest at dinner tonight. She'll be out of harm's way. Good. I'll let John know. You do that, Alex. 
I booked a table for two at the Rose Garden for eight. I'll expect a call. And a call you will get, Simon. Well, then, how do I look? All right. Thomas. You look all right. What am I supposed to say? Are you sulking? Sulking? What have I got to sulk about? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Because Pippa beat you at pool, maybe? I won one game. All right. If it's not that. Then what's with the deaf and dumb treatment, eh? Why the big sulky silence? Look, I'm just in a quiet mood, that's all. Is that all right? Anyway, I don't sulk. It's not in my nature. <sighs> I just hope there's something good on the box tonight. Listen, I am really sorry that I have to go out tonight. Tonight of all nights. But it's purely business. Very important business. Yeah, of course it is. Well, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Cold beer, a bit of telly, all on my own, lovely. Oh, Thomas, you're just not being fair. Oh, Inspector Morse, me thinks. Oh, don't you just hold your horses. Oh, please, please, don't mention horses, all right? You sod! Yeah. Look, it's not my fault that you fell into my life at a bad time. I mean, you came up here, you got involved in all my troubles, I fed you, I put you up. Yeah, yeah, you're all heart, aren't you? And worst of all, Thomas bloody gin I let you get to me. Do what? What you actually mean is you led me on. Use me. Look, in the short time that I've known you, I've been bashed up, I've been battered, I've been bruised, right? But never, never bonked. No, you wouldn't let me get that close, would you? You just wanted me hanging on one of your little strings like a lovesick wolf. Listen, before I say something that I just might regret for the rest of my life, answer me one question. Ooh. Now that sounds like the sort of question that shouldn't be asked in the first place. Why did you come back? I think I told you a long time ago that I'm a dab hand at running away, right? Well, I ran away from you. Why? For the same reason that I came back. Uh, Prince Charming's arrived. Listen, you. You look terrific. Thank you, kind sir. You're welcome, me lady. Have a nice time. Eh? Hey, if I promise not to be very late, will you wait up for me? I might. Good old Sally. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of laughs. No, I don't think so.
suppose any thoughts or plans for the future have been limited by finance, or rather lack of it. Yes, that's the problem with most small companies. Limited money equals limited planning. Thank you, Raymond. Please excuse me a moment, Sally. An urgent phone call. Oh, of course. No problems. Good. Sally, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to love and leave you, dear. Oh, is something wrong? Yes. Yes, it seems my mother's taken a turn for the worse. I'm going to have to go. Of course. Sorry. Bye. What can I say, eh? Yes. Thank God for those happened. Well, nobody really knows. All they can say for sure is that it started in the engine room. Engine room? Yeah, there was an explosion of some kind, I don't know. Sal? Sal? Best day will be a while, old son. They will. Sure, yet, Mrs. Hardcastle, but arson can't be ruled out. Your friend, Mr. Jim. How well do you know him, Mrs. Hardcastle? Well enough. Any motive there, do you think? Motive? What do you mean by that? Motive. As in motive, Mrs. Hardcastle. A grudge, jealousy, money. Oh, Thomas wouldn't do a thing like that. We understand he only arrived back here yesterday. And we've also established he was the last person. <laughs> to be seen in the engine room. Yours, Mrs. Ardcastle. It's not as it happens. It's mine. This is madness. He wouldn't do a thing like this. Mr. Jin's just helping us with our inquiries, Mr. Arcastle. This car, that is. Well, you're off your flipping heads. I can explain. Look, say something, will you, Sal? Well, come along nice and quietly, son. Who you call his son, you snot nose? Thomas, crap. don't make things worse. Now, I'm warning you. Yeah, and I'm warning you. I've got nothing to hide, right? So I don't need all this arm squeezing and pushing and shoving crap. You got that, son? Yeah, all right, Mr. Jin, you made your point. Now, would you mind getting into the car? Please. Fair enough. Thank you. Why is life with you all so bleeding complicated, eh? Oh, Thomas! Is this man under arrest, Inspector Kent? Is he being charged? You know that Drill Ms. Moore will be issuing a statement late. You must be Mrs. Sally Hardcastle. Penny Moore, Telegraph and Arts. Where are you going, Mrs. Hardcastle? To the police station. I'll come with you. Look, I know more going around the police station, Mrs. Hardcastle. I also suspect that Alex Peach and Simon Thorne are lurking behind all of this. Did you say Simon Thorne? Yeah. Do you know him? You'd better get in. <laughs> Look, I've told you a dozen times I saved the money up. You always carry your savings round with you, Mr. Jin. You know, I do as it happens. Man and boy, always. Never heard of banks, Mr. Jin? Oh, sort of stupid questions that, you wolf. Of course, I've heard of banks. I don't use them, that's all. I don't like... There's no law says I've got to use banks, is there? Don't get excited, Mr. Jin. Who's excited? How did you know my name is Wilf, Mr. Jin? That was taken just last week. I'm sorry, sir. <sighs> There's nothing for you to be sorry about. Oh, that no-good, smooth-talking silver tongue. 
Todd. Scumbag fits the bill. Oh, kill him. That's why he took me out last night. To get you out of the way. He pumped you about your financial situation, right? Yeah. And I, like a bloody fool, told him almost everything. Oh, how could I be such an idiot? Oh, I won't be too hard on yourself, Sally. Simon Thorne is an expert with women. Believe me, I know. We've been in touch with your previous employer in Newcastle, Mr. Gin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Seems we're a message service as well. Anyone Gail sends her love and asks if you'll give her a dirty phone call sometime. She goes on to say she's had a postcard from Portugal from her friend and yours, and he sends his best wishes. Oh, terrific. Are you in the habit of making dirty phone calls, Mr. Gin? Sling your up, Mr. Gin. So this man's taking bribes from Peach and knocking off a councillor's wife? Yes, Edward Cavendish. He's a slug. So we've got Thorne and Peach and Cavendish and a councillor's wife, eh? Nice one. Thomas, I know that look. Have you something in mind? Well, I've been brained, nutted and knocked back. I've been nigh and burnt to a cinder, blown up and banged up. I've had enough. He gets like this from time to time. I want to start fishing some out. Agreed? Oh, we can be so masterful. Yes? Uh, put her on hold, would you, Joyce? The sun's there. You've got to do it, Sal. You've got to lure him out. I can't. He knows my face. Sally, how nice to hear from you. Simon, um, I've come to a decision. I want to sell up. Hello? Hello, are you still there? Uh, yes, I'm still here. Look, do you think you could meet me in Russell Street in an hour? Um, yes, yes, I think I can make it. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bastard. Poor walls, bastard. As yet, neither your wife nor Councillor Fielding have seen these pictures. Of course, if and when we go to press. If and when, you say, uh, do I take it that there's a chance that you won't? When the other story breaks, I doubt if this sordid little story will make page five, if at all. Other story? What other story? You mean you don't know about Alex Peach? He's been questioned by the serious crime squad in connection with bribery as we speak. I have a reliable source that tells me he's about to do a deal to protect his own skin and name names. Is this Peach's place? Yes. Can I help you? Well, you can, as it happens, sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this is Betty. She's a wrestler. No. I don't believe it. He's done it before, you understand. He always manages to slip out from under. He'll swear he knew nothing of any financial transactions between you and Simon Thorne. Well, he's a liar. I can quote you on that, can I? Don't you dare. Uh, yes, Joyce. Uh, put me through to Mr. Peach, will you, please? It's, it's urgent. What? I, I, I can hardly hear you, Joyce. You sound different. That is because I'm whispering, Mr. Cavendish. The police are here. And I'm not really supposed to be talking to you. Alex Peach's office. Mr. Thomas Gin, please. Pen? Say goodnight, Alex Peach. I love it. Who the hell are you? My name's Thomas, and this is Betty. She's a wrestler. I don't care what she is. Out! Yeah. <coughs> Told you. In. Dead rats, dirty phone calls, burning my girl's boat. We're not very fond of you. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Now, Betty here, she wants to break your arm. Well, actually, she wants to break both your arms. Now, me, I don't want to do that, no. I just want to break you. And I mean really break. 
Now, the good news is your little friend, Edward Cavendish, has told the whole world and his dog all about it. Oh, and the law, of course. <laughs> well, now, we think a bit of compensation's in order, don't you, Betty? <laughs> Sensation I need, Lummy. Mr. Thorne. <laughs> oh, by the way, you're late, prison food. You can leave all the details to me, Sonny. I'll get you the best price I can. I'm sure you will. It won't be easy, but you can rely on me. Oh, yes. Good old reliable you, eh? Is there something wrong, Sally? Wrong? No. I've changed my mind. I'm not selling after all. What? You heard, scumbag. Hard life, innit? Plenty bye. <laughs> That's a going rate for a Range Rover of that year, give or take a few quid. But, Thomas, it isn't legal. <laughs> Neither was burning down your boat, sweetheart. Listen, when I found the keys, Betty convinced Mr Peach that you deserved a bit of compensation. You seem to have this knack of sorting me out, Mr Jim. Don't I just? So? Do I get the job or what? I won't give up, you know. But I might, Thomas. Yeah. 